Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Blackwood Church of Christ this morning. It's so lovely to see you all here. Um, just as we begin the service, I'd like to read you a call to worship. We worship the God who inhabits our world and indwells our lives. We need not look up to find God. We need only to look around, within ourselves, beyond ourselves, into the eyes of another. We need not listen for the distant thunder to find God. We need only listen to the music of life, the words of children, the questions of the curious, the rhythm of a heartbeat. We worship the God who inhabits our world and who indwells our lives. Will you please stand and sing with us? As we meet together, dear Lord, we pray. Bless the singing of your praise, the reading of your word, the sharing of our fellowship, the prayers that will be heard. Bless us as we meet together. Dear Lord, we pray. Amen. Oh, kids zone. That's right. There's Derrily going, kids zone, kids zone. Because um, I always forget. If there are any children... Um, who would like to head out to Kids Zone? Please follow Maxine, who's uh, heading out of the chapel now. So, lots of fun and games. No, the the older children need to stay here. Yeah, Esther. Yeah. <laughs> Good 
Let's continue to worship as family. In the New Testament, we read that Jesus, in a unique father-son operation, invites everyone to come to him and take time out with him. The listener can learn how to take a real rest. He, she are invited to walk and work with our God. Then and now we are encouraged to watch how Jesus does it. To learn from the unforced rhythms of forgiveness and love. There is an invitation to keep company with our God and learn to live freely and lightly. Lord, we take time now to sit with you in your presence. We confess, Lord, in our humanity, we sometimes fail miserably to walk with you. We rush ahead without consultation with you. We walk in our own independence. We rush to take control, fix problems, put band-aids onto wounds. Most times only after much hurt and misery, we slowly recognise we are weak, we are inadequate. We need you, Spirit of God. We pray that globally we all reach out to you. You know us, Lord. You know our hearts, our intentions, our anxious thoughts. We stop before you and lay bare our inner souls. We bring to you, gracious God, all concerns, regrets, worries that sit on our minds. Please help us put things into perspective. Help us recognise your presence in all things and know your peace. We are humbled and thank you for your forgiveness. We cannot change what was in the past, but please help us to forgive ourselves and each other. Please help us to step forward with you right at this moment and begin afresh. Living God, we pray for your creation, your peoples, your lands, your world far and near. We think of this week's bushfires, floods and summer heat in our own state, our country. We think of disasters beyond the effects on people's minds. We think of all involved, victims, supporters, medical and rescue staff, families, friends, children, those who had to evacuate and those who feared for others. Thank you, Lord, for each of them. Thank you for leasing to us and loaning us your amazing beauty, your creations, your lands. Help us be open to learn from previous good and wise practices. Please help us be true stewards and caretakers of your world. Guide us all to take responsibility and to leave your world as well as we can in a repaired state for following patrons. Loving God, we lift to you all those who are facing new challenges in employment, the workplace, with learning and study, in relationships and with uncertain prospects. Living God, Who have you laid on our hearts?
Thank you for all joys and celebrations. We give thanks for good things, large and small, that come to mind. Thank you for what you've been teaching, reminding and encouraging us from our beginnings. Thank you for purpose and meaning for our lives. Thank you for you, a mystery, and yet our security and comfort, our peace. We pray for ourselves, Lord, Walking forward from this moment, may we recognise you in each other. May we look to live each new day with encountering you, living God. May we truly listen for you and hear you in all circumstances. Please work through us that we might give the best possible human expression of your presence in our world, that we might better imitate Jesus, who rejected power, authority and control. The Jesus who favoured being with people in their day, day-to-day -day struggles, wanting to help them appreciate your presence in everyday neighbourly actions. Like the psalmist prayed for himself and as children of God, may we be like the green tree that spreads boughs to shield the weary traveller or holds out fruit to the hungry strangers. May we quietly and perpetually carry out your purpose in a barren land. Lord, you give us opportunity to leave all regrets behind Please give us strength and wisdom to let go and trust in your leading. Together, may we go forward from this new moment. What will you remind and teach me? What will you remind and teach us today, Lord? Thank you. Amen. Would you please stand and join us in our next song? Christ for me. Thank you. 
Good morning, everybody. What a week it's been. Who could believe that last Sunday there were massive fires in Cherry Gardens and it was hot, and today it's just beautiful out there, isn't it? During the week, um, some of you may or may not know that one of the roles I currently have is that I'm a chaplain at Rest Haven, um, which has been a fantastic opportunity for the last 15 months. And due to COVID, um, there have been delays and restrictions put on many people in aged care. So it's taken a little while, but finally on Wednesday, I was commissioned as a pastor of ministry for Rest Haven through the Uniting Church, which is a bit funny considering I'm here at the Church of Christ and this is my home. But, uh, but I had a choice. Because, because of COVID, I had to make a decision as to where I would hold that commissioning. We'd had these grand plans to have several people involved and have family there, but we weren't allowed to do that unless I went to a Uniting Church to have the service done there. But that seemed a bit daft when my parish and my ministry and my people are actually in a Rest Haven facility. So that's where we chose to have the commissioning service. And the reason I tell you this is because it, um, it was a beautiful afternoon where we shared together and we um, did all the official things that you have to do to have these things take place. But there's something about being with a group of people and being able to journey with them in a new space and a new time and to be able to commit yourselves to them. And that's what we do today. This is our home, this is our parish, these are our people. And we choose to come here every week because we know that God calls us to be people of faith and people of love and people of light. Whether it's at, in the workplace, whether it's in our families, or whether it's simply with each other as we get alongside each other. So communion is the outward sign, I guess. So we're not allowed to do communion in facilities at the moment, so, so the, the oldies miss out. But we get to have it here. So if you're at home and you've got bread and wine there or if you want to get your crinkly papers and bits out, now's that opportunity where we reflect on the meal that Jesus gave us to remind us that we are love and grace to each other. St. Paul said, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this and as often as you do and drink it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink together. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we have shared in bread and wine, part of a meal that you had with your followers all those years ago. And God, we are reminded that these symbols of bread and wine represent who you are and who you came to be, flesh on this planet, to show what it means to love, to forgive, and to be gracious to all. 
As we've taken these symbols, we ask that you become the grace and love and light that you showed in all our lives this week for all those who we come into contact with. And where we get it wrong, God, we know that you still love us and we ask for your forgiveness. Bless us now, we pray. Amen. Good morning. This morning's reading is from John chapter 5, verses 19 to 23. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. The Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing, and he will show him greater works than these, so that you will be astonished. Indeed, just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whomever he wishes. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, so that all may honour the Son just as they honour the Father. Anyone who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? It's good to be back. Uh, for those of you who don't uh, know me, my name is James. I'm the minister here. I've just been on three weeks holiday. That's why everyone's looking so refreshed and happy around here. Sorry, I'm back. No, it's, uh, it's good to be here. It's great as well to see, uh, see many uh, smiling, familiar faces. I also see some guests around the place, and we welcome you this morning. It's great to have you with us. hope you're able to hang around a little bit afterwards so we can say hi and uh, get to know you. We always in, enjoy uh, having a chat with new people around as well. Also, just want to uh, kind of shout out, and they probably can't hear me out there. There's a crowd in Kids Zone at the moment. They've done an amazing effort, uh, you know, coming along after the first uh, week of school. Uh, as a parent, I have no idea how we ever did the first week for five days in the past. Uh, three days was just about all we could get through. So, well done to you guys uh, out there for coming along, uh, being along this morning. Uh, we're glad that you can share. With us, this is a, um, because I've been away, you might not feel like it, but I feel like it, that this is the start of the year. I feel like we're kicking things off. I feel like this is a heading forward into a new year filled with hope and new expectations. I love that new year smell, um, that, you know, all full of opportunities and all of this as well. And that's what we're going to be talking a little bit about this morning. Kind of some reminders, uh, back to basics that are relevant in a new year, reminding us what our lives are about and what to orientate them around. But also, we're going to be looking at what our focus will be for this year as a church. We had a theme last year, Experience God, about how we can be attentive to God and encounter His joy and His peace and His hope. We've got a, a different theme for this year that we'll be talking about this morning. So just before diving into that, I invite you to pray with me. Our loving God, we thank you that you go before us. We thank you that you were here well before we arrived this morning and that you desire to speak to us and transform our hearts and minds. We pray that you would do just that, that you would awaken us, that we would see you, that we would hear from you, that we would draw close to you. In your name we pray. Amen. So again, if you haven't already locked in your New Year's resolutions, maybe this might be something to help you think about that. Now, see, I strongly believe we're here on earth for two reasons, two main reasons at least. The first is this, we have been put here on earth to do God's work as his representatives. In the beginning of the Bible, when God created paradise and put humanity into that paradise, he didn't just tell us to put up our feet, sit back, relax and don't worry. Even in the midst of paradise, even when everything was perfect, he gave us work to do. He told us to look after this paradise, to uh, keep the garden and till it. He told us to work as his representatives, to do more of the work that he had already been doing 
throughout the creation narrative, he had been bringing order where there was chaos. He had been bringing about life out of death, beauty in the midst of ugliness, and he told us to do the same. This was why we were here, to create. And that is why you have within you, I am confident, the desire to create, the desire to achieve. And this is why you feel frustrated or empty or meaningless if you are not producing anything. Even we, laid back, she'll be right, jeans count as formal wear Australians, still have within us the desire planted by God right back in the beginning to create and to achieve. And this desire, I believe, won't be entirely fulfilled in the places that unfortunately we most frequently go to fulfill it. It won't be fulfilled by making your children your project by producing well-behaved, well-balanced academic kids that you can show off at dinner parties. Though I'm really close to that, and if you want any hits, you can come talk to me after. Like, it's just, there's one, there's one key, and then once you get that, it's so easy. You know, this desire that you have within you won't be fulfilled by climbing the corporate ladder to show to yourself and to others that you can do it, you can achieve, and you are competent. And it won't be produced by... It won't be fulfilled, sorry, by producing the perfect Instagrammable life. Yeah, I looked it up, it's an adjective. With perfect clothes and perfect holidays and the perfect house. The desire within us, this desire within us, will only be fulfilled when it connects to the purpose for which it was planted within us. A desire to create and achieve will only be fulfilled when we do God's work as his representatives. We are put here not to achieve things for ourselves, not to do that which impresses others, but to bring about goodness, to foster beauty, to do justice, to make life, to create. We were here, put here to bring joy to others, to uplift the downtrodden, to reintroduce God to the world and the world to God, to help bring about growth. At this pseudo beginning of the new year, I know it's nearly February, as you think about what this year has in store for you, as you think about what your priorities are, I'd like to remind you of this, to draw your attention to it. You probably already knew it. I'm just putting it in front of you again. The first reason you have been put here on this earth is this, to do God's work as his representatives. The second reason we've been put here is this. We've been put on earth to find abundant happiness in connecting with God. We have been made to achieve, but thankfully that's not only what we have been made for. Back in the garden, we had a task to do back in the beginning, but we also had a lot of nothing to do. We were put there by God to enjoy the garden and to walk with him, to enjoy the beauty of his presence. Much like now, we might just simply enjoy and get great happiness from just spending, wasting time with a friend. You know, I know this might sound a little bit odd at first, what I'm about to say, but hang with me for a second, because I'm confident it's true. God has made us to be happy. That is why there is a desire for happiness within you. It's not because you're greedy. It's not because you're self-interested. It's not because you're fundamentally broken and or a bad person. The desire for happiness is within you because God put it there. Now, as before, sadly, most of us try to fulfill this desire with a sort of counterfeit parody of happiness. We try, so is the Australian way, to find happiness by taking away pain and adding in pleasure and thinking that would be enough. If our lives are messy and stressful and hectic, speaking for a friend, we believe that our desire for happiness will be fulfilled by taking away the pain of that mess and stress, by developing new habits or scaling back at work so we can spend more time at home, by giving the sea change or the tree change a go for a different pace of life. And I've just driven back from Streaky Bay a couple of days ago, and I can tell you there's about 50 towns encouraging to make the tree change <laughs> on the way back. If we find pleasure in people, we believe that our desire for happiness will be entirely fulfilled by spending more time with people in being the social butterfly and getting a partner and whatever it is. If we find pleasure in food, we think our desire for happiness will be fulfilled in just one more trip to the pantry and if entertainment, then a bigger TV and so on and so on. Much of modern Australian life can be described as the quest to fulfill our desire for happiness by taking away the pain and adding in more pleasure. But it won't work, at least not forever. People change. Health deteriorates, 
Clothes fade, gadgets break, circumstances are beyond our control. If these other things our happiness is built on, eventually they'll give up. Eventually they will disappoint. There is only one thing that will never give out on us. There is only one thing that will never change or disappoint, and that is God. We are made to be happy, and that happiness will only ever be truly, completely, entirely fulfilled in connecting with God. In paying attention to and becoming aware of God's presence. The God who is infinite joy and life and beauty. The God who is a joy and a beauty of which you only ever get but a mere taste in the most joyful or beautiful or exciting thing of this world. We are made to find happiness by finding our identity and our purpose and our meaning in God so that we have a firm rock to stand on circ- uh, when circumstances are good and a firm rock to stand on even when circumstances are bad. At the beginning of this new year, as you think about what this year has in store for you, as you're thinking about your priorities and how you're going to be spending your time and what habits you have and what projects you'll do as you're thinking forward into this new year, I'd like to remind you of these truths. We are here on earth to do God's work as his representatives and to be truly happy in connecting with him. That, I believe, is why we have this desire to create and achieve. It is why we have the desire deep within us for happiness. And these are the only things that will fulfill them completely. This is why we're here. Perhaps more accurately, put it, put it more accurately, we're not here to do these things. We're here because God invites us to join him in his work. He invites us to connect with him. He, in, sorry, he invites us to detach ourselves from our own aims and achievements, the ones that really ultimately end up leaving us feeling empty and stressed out. And instead to join him in the good works he has set aside for us, to learn how to discern his voice, to hear what surprising, subtle, exciting, scary and wonderful things he is directing us to do day by day, week by week and year by year. He invites us to stop being satisfied with merely cutting out the pain in our lives and replacing it with the things to distract us and instead to find a deeper, more profound, more sure and stable happiness in connecting with him to learn to pay attention to his still small voice speaking to our spirits, to learn how to hear moment to moment in those profound moments of life as well as the mundane ones, his encouragement, his comfort, his assurance. We are here to do God's work and to connect with him. And the way we do that is by discerning his voice moment to moment, day to day, by learning how to hear his voice. Now, perhaps there is no area of Christian living that is more shrouded in misconception, misunderstanding and fear than the practice of learning how to hear God. For many of us, when we hear that phrase, we think of tele-evangelists proclaiming that God told them that if you send them money, then you'll find financial freedom. Or people unable to pick which colour socks they're going to wear that morning without a word from the Lord. Or the girl who said that God told her to break up with you. Now, you're not going to believe me, that's not me. No, that's not a personal story. Just an example. You know, there's so much misconception and misunderstanding and fear around this idea of what it is to hear from God moment to moment, day to day, week to week, year to year. Which is a pity. Because for hundreds of years, hearing God hasn't been about control or manipulation. It hasn't been a way of shirking responsibility for your own decisions or seeking certainty in areas where you can't have certainty. For hundreds of years, for thousands of faithful followers of Jesus, hearing God has been a subtle, humble, transformative, wise, intelligent and beautiful spiritual practice that has led to life and growth time and time again. It's been so these followers of Jesus experienced in learning how to hear from God, what Dallas Willard would call an ongoing conversation with God. The ability, moment to moment, to be still and attentive to God to be able to recognise which thoughts that pop into our head in any given moment are from him and which ones are directed towards him and which ones aren't. It's about being able to say with a confident humility, that sense of peace I just felt is from God. To say with confident humility that that phrase that that popped into my head, a you are loved or a trust me, was from God too. That to be able to say, hearing from God is about being able to say with a confident humility 
that the idea that stuck in my mind after reading that Bible passage was his spirit speaking to mine. The desire I had to walk across the room and ask that person I barely knew how they are doing was from him too. Hearing God is about learning how to respond to what we hear too, to learn how to live out of obedience and love. When I was looking into this series and thinking about it and what does it mean to hear from God, you hear people talking about it, but what does it look like? What does it feel like? How does it work? Uh, the story of, of Ben Rowe popped into my mind. Now, we've had Ben here to speak before. He's coming again soon. Ben and his wife, Annie, started a, a ministry to uh, youth, in particular, uh, you know, out in the community in Elizabeth. Uh, and they have a story about how discerning the voice of God played a role in that. So I asked Ben to put together a brief video talking about that, and we're going to have a look at that now. Hey guys, so um, James has asked me to record a little message for you guys about um, how we first started Streetlight and, uh, and sort of, you know, hearing the voice of God and, uh, and, and following that. Um, so back in 2014, I started uh, working as a youth pastor out in Elizabeth. Um, and during those first couple of years, I really felt like God was stretching and growing me through the experiences that he had allowed me to see and had exposed me to um, of the brokenness of, uh, of young people and their families out in the community. Um, through a, uh, a course that I actually did with James um, back in youth ministry days um, called Shift, we went through the study of, uh, of Jesus in the four Gospels um, and, and looked at them sort of together side by side. And, and as we got fairly early on in the piece of that, um, we were looking through Matthew and, uh, and the really the, the verse in Matthew 5, um, verse uh, 14 through to 16, uh, where Jesus says that I am the light of the world. Um, no one hides their light under a bowl. I really just felt this deep conviction that God was speaking to me. There was this like inner sort of sense that this was was meaningful to what we were doing and to what I was, what God was calling me into. Um, and I really felt like uh, there was this challenge that I couldn't leave just to rest by itself. Um, so I think that uh, you know, as we engage with Scripture, we we hear, we feel, um, and we sense different things, um, and we've got to be in tune with what God might be saying to me through this text. Um, the second part of, uh, of of really how I felt God speak to us as we started Streetlight was actually in our obedience. You know, we have to be willing to put into practice the very things that we feel like God is challenging us with. If we simply just read the Word but fail to do what it says, the Word actually says in James that. That, that you know, faith without deeds is dead, um, and that, that it's useless if we simply are just hearers of the word but are not doers. So we've actually got to put it into practice. So stepping out in faith, believing that this is God. You know, we will not always get it right, but you know what? We believe in a God that is always with us. We believe in a God that is is walking beside us. That He actually seeks and desires to guide us and bless us in our lives. So that means that as we put our faith in Him and we step out that we are trusting that he is with us even if we get it wrong. So we actually first tried going to the council and uh, and we asked them if we thought that was where God was seeking us to step out in faith to help those out in the community. And that wasn't right at that time. And so then we, uh, following on from that little defeat, we, uh, we came back. Um, we ended up getting in touch with the shopping center because of a time where I saw a young person stealing over at the shopping center and felt like God was again challenging me, this time through an experience that I faced, sensing that God was calling us, this is where I'm calling you to be. So following that, we, we, we got in contact with the shopping center and we just, you know, step by step, through trying to be obedient with what it was that we felt God calling us to do, both through his word and through the experiences that he gives us. Um, and I, I just really yeah, hope that that uh, encourages and challenges you guys as you seek to hear God and put that into practice in your own life. Cheers. It is hear and respond. Not every sermon will be on that, but we do have a couple of series coming up that will focus on that. And, and it's all about what it does mean to hear from God and how to respond. One of the first things we'll be looking at is the fact that, uh, you know, some of these abuses of people saying they've heard from God, like how to avoid that. And we're going to affirm that this isn't for crazy people. 
that this is a, a long, ancient, humble, confident practice of many faithful followers of Jesus. We're going to look at what it feels like and looks like when we talk about discerning the voice of God. We're going to go through some of those practices around people who have done it and some of the resources and some of the life that it has given. I know for many of you, the idea of looking into this, what does it mean for me to start to learn to recognize the still, small voice of God? You're all in. You're doing that already. And for others of you, maybe it's a little bit more confronting. Maybe it's a challenge. I invite you to take the step out in faith, in confidence, to give it a go and come along with us on this journey. Because I believe that in being able to hear from God and discern where he's calling us to, the good works he is putting before us, like what happened with Ben, that's where we get to engage with what we were put on earth to do. That's where we get to achieve what we were really meant to achieve and to create what we were really meant to create. And as we learn to hear this and to hear God's love and grace and just joy poured out to us in our everyday life as we learn what it means to converse to God, that's where we find the true happiness that our soul was crying out for. This has just been a very, very brief introduction to this our theme here and respond next week and the week after and then we have a bit of a series after that too we'll go into it in far more detail as we conclude though for the morning I, I invite you to think about this i've put before you two reasons at the beginning of 2021 that you're here on earth to do god's work as his representatives and to find absolute overwhelming happiness in connecting with him do you believe that's why you're here? If you do, how will it shape the coming year for you? And what role or learning how to discern the still small voice of God in your heart have to play in that? Will you pray with me? Our Lord and God, we thank you that you, you love us. Um, we thank you that... Uh, as much as we sometimes like being autonomous, independent, self-sufficient little beings down here that, that you desire to relate, you desire to lead us, to guide us, to comfort us. Just pray that you would open up our hearts and minds to that, that as we enter into this theme for the year, that you would help us to overcome any kind of fear or familiarity, um, to be willing to learn, not from what I have to say, but be willing to learn from you to learn what it is to enter into this day-by-day, moment-by-moment conversation with you, learning to hear your still small voice to us. God, as we pray. Amen. As we learn to hear and respond, our chains are gone. We will be set free. Will you please stand and sing with us? Amazing grace, my chains are gone.
take a seat. We've got a, just a couple of things to pass on before we finish up. As we were talking about hearing and responding, Ben mentioned it as well. I didn't tell him to mention that, just uh, something he picked up on. Uh, so we, you might have heard something from the service today in the communion talk and those wonderful songs and the prayer. Don't, don't just let that slip through your fingers. If you need to put something down on writing, we've got our connect cards in the pews. You can jot down a, a prayer request or just something that stood out to you that you want to share. If you want to get in touch with a minister or an elder, you can put that there. And at home, we have our digital welcome card there too that you can fill out and, um, and get in touch with us that way. Now, next, um, next week, this year is going to have three beginnings, you know, first this week and next week. We're really beginning the year at the church. We're having Celebration Sunday. Now, you would have seen this in the pews as you came in. At home, it's going to go out uh, just tomorrow in our messenger newsletter. Everyone else here will get that as well. And I just wanted to draw your attention to that as well. We're kicking off the year first and foremost with prayer because we believe that what we really want to see in ourselves and in others this fundamental transformation can't come about by great programming or good messages or a slick service or anything like that. It's a work of God. And so we're aiming to have, no, we're not aiming, we will have a continuous primer prayer from 6.30 in the morning till 8.30 at night, kind of dawn till dusk. Is it crazy to get people to sign up for uh, 28 slots of prayer with a week's notice. No, because I know that if you've got an inkling within you, you're going to respond and you're going to head out to the foyer and you're going to speak to Joan and have your name put down in a slot and it'll be much appreciated. Uh, we're going to do it. It's going to go very, very well. And then the service next week is a special celebration service uh, where we are inviting our leaders up to be prayed for. We're sharing some of our hopes for the year and afterwards finishing up with a morning tea as well. That's the, worth the price of entry, if nothing else. And then that night, next week, Sunday, uh, 6 p.m., a worship night here in the chapel. It's going to be laid back. We're going to be singing some songs together, times of prayer and reading. I encourage you to come along to that. You can invite others along to that as well. It'll be very easy uh, to engage with so that's just take that home have a look at it have a look in particular at that prayer time if you think that you could dedicate half an hour next sunday to pray for our community and for our church and uh, so that we can have this continuous time of prayer to start off the year talk to join join in the foyer she'll be by the whiteboard writing up people's names and um, or when you get the this mailed out tomorrow you can click on that link to go see there Please come talk to me if any of that's unclear. If you have any questions, send us an email online if you'd like to know more. Uh, finally, just one really quick note before we do wrap up. Uh, if you know about our coffee and scones mornings on Tuesdays, that's starting up again uh, on in two days' time. It starts at 9 in the morning and it goes till 12. You can come along here for uh, kind of uh, free coffee, some free scones and some good company. So now as we conclude... As we launch into our days and our years, I share with you this blessing. Oh, our Lord and God who loves us, who created us for purpose and happiness, speak to us and give us ears to hear. Go in grace, go in peace, go in love.